Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology at the University of Ottawa. This is my uh, fairly recent website. I've done over 100 YouTube videos on abrupt climate change, extreme weather events, the Arctic, methane, um, just about anything and everything related to climate change science. And uh, please consider uh, a donation to support my work if you um, appreciate it. It's all self-funded. So what I'm talking about today is I want to give a sort of a chronological summary of what happened with the carbon monoxide scare over California. So on February 25th, the satellite data showed that there was a large emission of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide uh, over California. Um, and the initial emission occurred on February 25th, sometime between 1600 hours and 1900 hours. There were some postings on the internet um, after that particular emission within a few days, um, you know, wondering what was going on. Um, I uh, kind of ignored it initially, you know, didn't think too much of it. And then I started investigating it more on the 28th and the 29th. And there are a lot of questions. So I did a blog posting on the 29th asking the question, precursor to the big one in California, uh, based on the precautionary principle. Um, so there was precedent that CO had come out before a large earthquake in India. Um, and, you know, I wanted to see what was going on. I have a lot of friends in California. You know, I kind of wanted to see what was going on. So. I did these videos, you know, just analyzing the satellite data, you know, asking lots of questions. I did two particular videos and on, so this was on February 29th. Now on March 1st, there was a NASA press release, which was tweeted out basically, and it was linked to here. And this was arguing that the elevated concentrations over California uh, were incorrect. They were a consequence of unrealistic emissions from satellite observations of fires leading to elevated concentrations. And so it was about an instrument being turned off and then being turned on and not yet being stabilized as the instrument passed over California. So this was a little bit of a cryptic um, to, to most people, to the vast majority of people, this was a bit of a cryptic uh, posting. Um, and uh, I'd have to fault NASA with their PR on this. Um, this sort of thing should be translated to plain language and explained in a bit more detail for people, especially when around, going around social media is the, uh, you know, people are getting worried about this carbon monoxide and, you know, is there a big quake coming in California? So just as a little bit of background, the GMAO, Global Modeling and Assimilation Office, GMAO, uh, they use computer models and data simulation to enhance NASA's program of Earth observations. It uses the Goddard Earth Obser Observing System, GOS family of models. So this particular one is GOS-5. Um, basically, what the data assimilation studies are, um, it's not explained very well here at all. Um, or there's more information here on the GOS-5 system, the Goddard Earth Observing System model. So the satellite was a is a polar orbit satellite. So it circles the Earth like this, and it's gyrating around the pole, but it's a polar, um, polar orbit. So at only particular times is the satellite and the sensor directly over a region. So it's collecting measurements um, using, looking, looking at the light coming back as a passive sensor. 
Um, and it's, it's got a spectrometer and it's measuring um, carbon monoxide, CO2, SO2 using, using a spectrometer. But it's only collecting data at a specific time. So that data that's co connect, collected at a specific time is then fed into a model and the model will go through time steps and propagate and try to give you an image of what's happening with CO, say, over the entire planet at a given time. But it's only collecting data over one particular spot, you know, a swath at a particular time. And then it feeds that into the model and propagates it through. So it's an assimilation of both the data and the model, or a hybrid, if you like. So that's basically what was happening. So what NASA is saying in the first press release, which is a bit cryptic, is that there was a, the sensor had been turned off and turned on, and it collected the CO data incorrectly. Now, I had a lot of questions about that. This was after the, uh, this was a day later after I produced those first videos. So the first press release, it mentioned the CO, said nothing about CO2 and SO2. The emissions, as you can see from the videos I did, um, basically seem to be occurring in spatial patterns that aligned with the faults, the major fault lines in, in California. So how could fires aggravate in these regions? And there weren't any, there was no fires to be detected. Um, there was an earthquake in New Zealand that showed a CO release um, just before, around the time of the earthquake. So this was, you know, interesting. Uh, you know, was the data wrong over the whole globe? Was it just over California? These things really weren't explained. Um, so I guess the question is, you know, it, it seemed like it was very difficult to understand uh, from the explanation what was going on. So I asked people, I said, go to the USGS site, pick an earthquake, go to Earth Null School, look at, this, look at these gases a week, a few weeks before and after the quake, you know, share your findings. Um, so, people did that. Um, reminder that there was nothing said at all for five days by NASA, scientists, satellite engineers. There was no press release on, on anything at all. Um, and then um, it looked like the data was confirmed by a different satellite, different sensor. Uh, this was a Copernicus European satellite and it showed these high levels over California but it turns out they were just taking the NASA data um, and incorporating into their, their information. Um, I looked at other areas uh, where there was an earthquake, like over Beijing, you know, big city, you'd expect lots of CO, you know, and the readings seem to be correct over Beijing. Um, so there were all of these different issues going on. You know, there was a lot of stuff going back and forth on social media. Um, and then um, what happened is, so this is, uh, you know, this is after I had already done the videos. You know, this site quite rightly says, be skeptical of sites that peddle fear. Um, you know, I never said that there was going to be an earthquake. I just was trying to show the data and was saying that, you know, it looked like there was a case where there was a big CO release and uh, there was an earthquake a week later. You know, just stating exactly what people had observed in the past. Um, you know, a, a particular paper. Um, this is a link to the uh, March 1st. That, the, the first thing from NASA was March 1st. So, five, like I say, five days later. Um, and uh, then there was other stuff coming on. There was a lot of stuff going around. I was getting uh, some emails from people, you know, and Facebook messages saying that there'd be some cases of people being, you know, going to hospital for CO, stuff like that. I mean, when something like this is happening and there's a very strict timeline, like you want to know what's going on before a week is up, already five days has gone by, there's kind of like an urgency to figure out what's going on. You know, some people had said that the uh, sensors in California weren't detecting high levels of the gases. You know, and then on the other hand, there were people that were reporting that, that there was, you know, higher numbers of people being sick and stuff. So, you know, you gotta, you try to get at the root of the problem. Um, so this came out from GIS, the head of Goddard Institute of Space Science, saying further updates and corrections to the 
GMAO glitch. Um, so then if you go to that link, um, there was more information uh, from NASA. So, you know, they explained that, you know, there were some fires that possibly contaminated the data. And when the sensors were starting up, they were warming up, they amplified the levels of that they recorded of those fires. And then uh, that, once that was input into the model, then it would be carrying it forward, showing how that, how that, those, th those uh, phantom gases, if you like, would be distributed by circulation and so on. So this shows you what the original data was showing. This is a total CO, so very high levels here. And when they uh, corrected it, um, this is what, what you come up with. There's no signal uh, with the corrected data. And this just shows some of the, the uh, temperatures and uh, things like that um, going on. So, so uh, basically they had to go and they had to, th th these are some of the things to, um, that the GMAO was taking uh, to do to, to uh, go back and, and uh, correct it, uh, the data, you know, get the proper data and correct the area. You know, we apologize for any convenience. This is a, this is a gross uh, understatement um, <laughs> from NASA. You know, there are a lot of people worried there was gonna be a, a major earthquake uh, p possibly occurring in California. And, uh, you know, that's why, you know, one of the reasons, I mean, I was really trying to get at the, the root of the problem. I mean, um, would I have done things differently had I known? Uh, yes, but uh, you know you're working very quickly. You know, you, you know you want to get some some assessment out very quickly. You know, perhaps you uh, you know you act a bit too fast. Um, and then once we had that second press release from NASA on the third, you know it looks like the sensor's faulty. Um, you know, it was still puzzling over how, it, how the data model got it so wrong, why it was right in some places, most places of the world, why it was only wrong in California. It was just really bad luck for NASA that the, um, the glitch occurred right over major fault lines in California um, and showed some spatial pattern of the fault lines. Um, so this is the explanation video, which I promised to do. Uh, a couple other points is if you go and you do a Google search uh, today, you know, uh, March 7th, I guess, you know, carbon monoxide levels, California, you get all of these hits. Okay, so this came out two days ago, prelude to ap apocalyptic U.S. Earth earthquake. Uh, you know, there's still, the Christian today, uh, you know, there's still stuff that's wrong. I mean, it hit the CBS uh, news. So this is the, uh, there's all kinds of stuff here. You know, some stuff staying debunked. I mean, this is one of the problems with the internet, right? You don't really know. Like this was the CBS article. Um, actually, this was the, uh, yeah, this was the CBS article, you know, from uh, March 3rd. So, you know, whether it happened after the press release, I'm not sure, uh, you know, but, it, but it's, they triggered the scare, you know, and it talked about the different blogs, wondering if what was going on. I think it's very important that that organizations uh, are a bit more responsive. You know, this was some of the uh, prelude to earthquake. You know, this is the this was a, an article here as well. You know, talking about <laughs> you know giving all kinds of things. So I get and this uh, Snopes had something out on March first saying it wasn't um, a, a real thing, and they referred to the link the initial link to, to uh, NASA. Now, you know, a lot of people, the Earth Null School site was where people were seeing the data. And, uh, you know, they got kind of a bad rap because, uh, you know, people thought it was their data, but of course they're getting the data from NASA, the Copernicus satellites getting it from NASA. So hopefully uh, people can learn things uh, from, from this experience, um, myself included, that, um, you know, you have to be really careful, but then you also, you know, would I have done things differently knowing what I know? Well, what I knew at the time, I acted, you know, I thought in an appropriate fashion, you know, using the precautionary principle. So uh, thank you for watching and, uh, you know,